Welcome to Psychographic Show. We know all about the Earth well, as it is the only home for life in the whole universe. Let's travel back 5 billion years ago. After the Big Bang and the formation of Sun, the dust and rocks that rotated the Sun are attracted together by a mysterious force called gravity. And on the passage of millions of years, the gravity pulled all these rocks and dust together to form the Earth. At this time, Earth was a hot sea of lava constantly getting hit by asteroids. The water particles brought up from the asteroids cooled down the Earth over time to form the ocean. The lava that is still hot under the oceanic crust bubbled up into huge volcanic island and they joined to form the continents we walk on today. Planets are usually round because of the force of gravity pulling the dust and rock particles from its center. Although the Earth's shape is technically a sphere, Earth is not, in fact, a perfect sphere. As the Earth rotates, it tends the planet to widen out. At the equator, due to that centrifugal force, thus making it an oblate spheroid. The hot rocks below move the crust, breaking it apart, and this process is called plate tectonics. To make this video short, we will make a whole video of it later. For now, just remember that the giant plates crumble together to form higher mountains or violently plunge deep trenches. Thus, the highest land area form is the Mount Everest, which is in Nepal, and the deepest trench is the Mariana Trench of Pacific. It seems to us that the mighty oceans are indeed deep, but is in average just 3.73 kilometers deep and comprises a very small percent of the grass, which itself is around 50 kilometers deep. Below the grass is the mantle, which is about 2,900 kilometers. The mantle is of upper mantle and the lower mantle. Below the mantle comes the core. The outer part of the core contains iron and nickel in a molten state at a temperature of 4,000 to 5,700 degrees Celsius. And the inner center is the inner core at a radius of 1,200 kilometers. Surprisingly, the iron and the nickel here are the most solid because of the very high pressure. The pressure in the inner core is estimated to be 330 to 360 gigapascal. Earth's mass is distributed unevenly and this difference of distribution lead to a slightly uneven gravity and make slighter difference of gravity in each region. As I said earlier, the asteroids that constantly fell on the Earth for millions of years brought water particles to collectively form the oceans, and this eventually helped cool down the hot hell of lava, making it the blue planet. The Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down because of the moon. As the fast-spinning Earth attempts to drag ahead of the sluggishly orbiting moon, it causes the moon to slow down its rotation. And at the meantime, the Earth also slowed down of it, losing a lot of energy due to friction at the insides. This leads to the formation of tides in the oceans. You are spinning through space at just over 1,000 miles per hour. Yes, as the Earth rotates on its own axis, people on the equator move the fastest, while someone standing on the North or South Pole move the slowest. You can feel the speed of the Earth because speed is relative, and you can feel it only if the speed changes all of a sudden. That's not gonna happen unless a planetoid like Tia hits the Earth and cause sudden change in speed of rotation. The Earth is made up of 70% water and 30% land. The ground you're walking on is recycled. The rock cycle transformation goes like this. Igneous rocks to sedimentary rocks and to metamorphic rocks and back again. Magma or molten lava in the Earth merges up and hardens into rock. Well, that's the igneous part. Plate tectonics constantly uplift these igneous rocks to the surface. 
these tiny fragments gets eroded, deposited, and buried, and the pressure from above compacts them into sedimentary rocks such as sandstone. If sedimentary rocks get buried even deeper, they get morphed into metamorphic rocks under lots of pressure and heat. When these metamorphic rocks get into a subduction zone, where one piece of crust is pushing under another, they may find themselves transformed back into magma again. Some 300 million years ago, there was just one massive supercontinent called Pangaea, and there was just one giant ocean called Pantalasa. About 200 million years ago, the supercontinent began to break up. Gondwana first split from Laurasia. If you can imagine Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and Australia all together in the same landmass, yes, it's our huge Gondwana which was split from Laurasia. If you are wondering what Laurasia is, it's present day Eurasia and North America connected together. These facts are based on plate tectonic theory proposed by Alfred Wenner. But even before Alfred Wenner proposed it in 1915, the first one to propose the continental theory was German biologist Ernst Haeckel in the year 1884, where he claimed a sunken landmass called Lemuria had existed on as an explanation for the absence of missing link fossil records of lemurs. He also included migration routes, which he thought the first humans has used outside of Lemuria and not Africa. This theory was later overrided by Alfred Wenner's plate tectonic theory. The layer of atmosphere that we are dependent is the troposphere. The troposphere starts at Earth's surface, where nearly all weather condition takes place. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere, where planes usually take their route, and just above them is the ozone layer that protects us from the sun's harmful radiation. Above that is the mesosphere, which is the coolest with around negative 85 degrees Celsius, and meteors fall at the top of this layer. Above that is the thermosphere, where meteors constantly fall, and the top of the thermosphere about 100 kilometers above from Earth's surface is itself called space. The layer directly above the thermosphere is the exosphere. The upper level of the exosphere gradually fades into outer space where the Earth's gravity doesn't affect. Let's look at some of the Earth facts. The hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth is 58 degrees Celsius at Al Aziziya, Libya in 1922. Although this record has gained general acceptance as the world's highest temperature recorded, Fantoli generally concluded that the probable extreme maximum should have been only 56 degrees Celsius. And the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth is in Vostok Station of Antarctica. It plunged to a scary cold negative 89.2 degrees Celsius. The highest point above sea level is Mount Everest, measuring 8,848 meters above sea level. The lowest exposed land on Earth is the Dead Sea Shore, measuring around 400 meters below sea level. The deepest point on Earth is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean, measuring 11,033 meters below sea level. The distance between Earth and the Sun is about 150 million kilometers, also called as one astronomical unit. The plates of the Earth are shown here in the picture. Take a closer look at the direction of its movement. This plate constantly moves to make changes to the continents we see today. Imagine if the Earth cools completely. The plates on the surface will no longer move and there will be no earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. It will take more than 90 billion years. But before it happens, Sun will reach Earth's orbit to melt the Earth in another 5 to 7 billion years into sea of magma. As the Earth itself spins on its axis, the inner core spins as well and it spins at a different rate than the outer core. This creates a dynamo effect or convection 
and current within the core. This is what creates the Earth's magnetic field. Imagine what if the core is solid? It indeed will put an end to the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field protects life on the Earth's surface from harmful particles coming from the Sun. It keeps the animals and plants safe within the planet's atmosphere. No wonder Earth is the only planet known to have life. Earth is special.